Two months ago, at the Jewel on the outskirts of Edinburgh, it was 8.30 on the morning of Thursday, October the 9th. We've used actors throughout this reconstruction, and the security routine we show has since been substantially changed. I was looking forward to work that day. I was going to be very busy. Okay, I'll give you the spin. No two days are ever the same, and it's a challenge every day. Just have time to drink it. 8.16am, and the car park's almost empty. But whose is this? A red Vauxhall Omega, a rare high-powered saloon. Hello? Yep. Yeah, okay then. Right, right. Listen, I'm gonna have to go. Mm. See ya. As I was waiting for my statement to print out from the cash point, I just turned round and I'd heard a car coming into the car park. I found it quite strange because obviously the shop wasn't open. So here was another red car, one of several that morning. This one, a maroon Cavalier that had been stolen two days earlier. It now had false plates copied from a legitimate Vauxhall Cavalier that's unconnected with what happened next. Back in the car park, a sign writer was changing opening times in preparation for the start of 24-hour shopping. As I was driving out, a second car had drove in. It was a small car and it had three people in, and it drove up beside the first car. I thought it was quite strange because no one was getting out of the cars. They did look quite relaxed. I thought maybe they were dropping someone off at work. I felt that we'd both had a close escape from death or serious injury. The men I saw running into the shop maybe weren't even in the car in the first place. They may have been stood outside and run in. They were all really calm. I thought he was actually going to blow my head off. I actually thought at that stage, you know, why are, why are you going to shoot me, you know? I've done everything you've sort of asked. Why shoot me? Quick, get help! There's robbers and they've got guns! Security! Security! To the foyer, right away! The two robbers, with their driver, made off in the Cavalier. Calmly, they turned right out of the Asda car park towards the A1 roundabout. But there, the driver seemed to lose his cool. From here, they briefly disappeared. Where did they go? They had no right to do that to us as ordinary shop workers just trying to make a decent living. I still feel very angry. In the next 10 minutes, the Cavalier must have stopped to let out two members of the gang. A witness at New Craig Hall saw only one man in the vehicle. I remember looking at the car, I didn't recognise it. I didn't recognise the chap that was inside it either. He was early to mid-30s. He had sort of olive, darkish complexion. Um, he was quite slim, he had quite a lined, gaunt face. He had short, dark hair with a, a receding hairline. I thought he had either a mole or a spot or something on his cheek. I remember thinking it was a nice car and wondering what the chap did. 
it's quite a small village and we all know each other and you pretty much know people's cars and who they are and people's faces. He pulled in just next to the, the, the skips, um, about so 20 yards from my car, um, and just parked and I looked across at him again. There was another car parked directly across from my car. It was a red car that wasn't normally there. This could have been the Peugeot 106 seen earlier at Asda. Did you notice it that morning? The driver of the Cavalier seemed to amble away. But did he then double back into Klondike Street and drive off in the red Peugeot? Harry McCadden once inclined to use terms like professional meticulous with this crime, but actually it was bloody reckless as well, wasn't it? Yeah, that's absolutely right. These men showed a total disregard for the members of staff safety. As the, the lady passed the, the glass windows, as, as her heel was actually at the windows, the car crashed through. There was a, a space of time of one second. Now, was that careful planning good timing on their part, or was that just luck? It was absolute luck. They just luck they weren't Totally killed. didn't care about their safety. Now, because of the violence, the extreme violence that was used in this, is a very, very big reward being put up. Tell us about the reward and how people can claim it. As the superstores and other major stores throughout the country have put up a £30,000 reward, which is a very large reward, they're very keen to have these men arrested because of the violence that was used with this particular incident. And how do you get the reward? Do you have to help the rest of it or convict the whole gang? Any information that's given that culminates in the arrest and conviction of one or any one of these members even of the just gang. One of them. Yes, even just one. Are, are they local men or the Edinburgh men? No, the stolen car, the plates on the stolen car were definitely made in a shop in Newcastle, Newcastle and Tyne. And the stolen car had travelled in excess of 300 miles, so we know that it could have travelled from Edinburgh to Newcastle and back again to Edinburgh. So maybe a Tyneside connection. We've got two good descriptions. One we saw on the film, we'll come back to that in a moment. The day before the robbery, which would have been the 8th of October, somebody else was seen. And explain this, will you? Yes, we've looked at hundreds of hours of security video, and this particular gentleman is seen at the doors that the car crashed through. He seems to have a piece of paper in his hand, and he looks as maybe sketching something. He may well be totally innocent, but we'd like to know who he is to eliminate him from the inquiry. OK, if you know that, it's call us. And, and then the driver himself. Very good witness, very good description. Yes, uh, I would like people to cast their minds back to the 9th of October. This man's described as having a distinctive mark or a scar on his left side of his face. Um, it may be an injury, so therefore he may not have it now. So I'd like to hear from anyone who knows of somebody who has a mark, a scar, or a birthmark on that side of his face. It may have cleared up by now, though. Or if you know him, you could make £30,000 in a single phone call. As you saw, two people missed death, perhaps by inches, when that car came through and broke down the doors. If you know who was involved, if you recognised anything, if you've heard anything, please call us. It's live, the numbers are free, 0500 600 600. Uh, that's here to the studio, or you can call the incident room 0131 311 3502. That's Edinburgh, 311 3502. And now, again, here's Detective Constable Jackie Haynes. Three years ago, there was an attempted armed robbery in Worcestershire when gunmen attacking a security van fired at members of the public. Detectives refused to give up on this case and hope that this man may be able to take the inquiry further. He's Neville Charles Lancaster, 33, from Birmingham. He's six foot two, well built, and if you see him, you'd better not approach him. He might well be dangerous. Instead, please call us, 0500 600 600. 600. There's a warrant out for his arrest, so call the incident room direct on 01527 584 That's 01527 584 Earlier this year, a man called Michael McGonagall was found shot and seriously injured in a house at Gothamlock in East Glasgow. He died on his way to hospital. Since then, we've been trying to trace this man, Robert McIntosh, and there's a petition warrant out for his arrest. Robert McIntosh is 37, six foot tall, with scars on his top lip. If you get a chance to look at his hands, you'll see the top of his right middle finger is missing. On his left hand, he has a tattoo with the letters R-A-B, and there's a scar on his left index finger. 0500 600 600, or call the incident room direct on 0141 532 4300. That's Glasgow, 532 4300. Now, everyone thinks that they wouldn't get into a car with a stranger, but lots of people do. And in Essex, it seems that one man has been on the prowl for women, trying to coax them into his Ford Fiesta. He seems genuine and he's persuasive, but on at least one occasion, he has raped someone, and other women have been lucky to escape.